But it's sudo slash volume slash natsuki slash archive slash software images mac os 10 installers install os 10 l copy 10 dot app content resources create restore ready oh f they didn't give me the administrator password greetings internet crazy ken is back and today oh boy i'm gonna take you on a journey with this lovely imac right here i don't even know what model it is particularly it's not the super thin one as you can maybe see it's a little bit thicker it's the slightly older model but it's still cool looking, and I received this by someone who received it from someone else for a price that I think was way too low. <laughs> You'll probably agree. Maybe I'll tell you, maybe I won't. But yeah, they got it for a really generous price, and they just requested that the data would be erased and it would be set up kind of fresh so they can use it. Now, I wasn't given specific instructions to zero out the hard drive, which means every bit of data is actually erased, but I might do that anyway, depending on how long it will take, because that procedure can take a while. But first, let's find out what's even on here, because I don't even know. And we'll also find out the year and all that good stuff. Okay, so, place your bets now. What operating system do you think is on here? Leopard. Snow Leopard. Lion. Mountain Lion. Place your bets right now. Come on, what do you think? This might take a while. All right, I'm going to grab a smoke. I'll be right back. All right, that was good. What do we have? Well, given the dock design, this could be... Oh, you know, now that I see the window decoration, this is probably Snow Leopard. So let's have a peek. Oh, AVG is on here, apparently. We're not going to do the Wi-Fi right now. And yes, sorry, Bob. 1068, that is Mac OS X Snow Leopard. G hey, piss off. You know, hang on a minute, you know, th this is kind of like how the notification center is now. Were they thinking ahead, maybe? I don't even know. But anyway, yeah, so this is running Snow Leopard. Piss off warning, don't care. So yes, we have 3 gigahertz, Core 2 Duo processor, 4 gigs of RAM, alright. And this is an iMac 10.1. I don't remember what year that is. There's Firewire and no Thunderbolt, so this is probably what, 2010, 2009? Mac Tracker 101. Okay, so this is a late 2009 iMac. Okay. So let's just take a moment to appreciate the old dock design and the old iconography in the Mac OS. We currently do not have this style today. And for those of you who are rather new to the Mac, well, you may not have seen this. This is actually what the overall style mostly looked like before the Yosemite days when everything changed. Uh, yes, the old Finder icon, we got the App Store dashboard, Star Firefox, Google Chrome, and we got Microsoft Orifice over here. That's pretty cool. All right, so all this stuff before you. Oh, yes, we got iLife on here, too, with iMovie, iPhoto, and all that chiz. Yes, this is all about to be fried. <laughs> In a humane way, we are going to either erase the hard drive or maybe just the user account. I'm actually not quite sure what I want to do yet. And check out that iTunes icon. Oh my gosh. I feel like it's changed so much. I think the longest running iTunes icon was the CD with the two blue eighth notes. That lasted a long ass time. <laughs> and then Steve Jobs was like, no one really listens to CDs anymore. So they got rid of the CD from the logo and then they changed the logo like every five seconds since then. I think Apple just does it when they're bored, you know, just because they know they can't really fix the software. They just kind of change the icon. Right. So I did a little digging around. Guess what little gem I discovered? Something amazing. TurboTax Deluxe, then the 2010 release, the 2011 release, the 2012 release, the 2013 release, and then the 2014 release. They're all on here. And for some reason, that one has the Ghostbusters on it, but none of the others do. Don't know why all the versions are on there. Anyway, I lied. That's actually not what I care about. What I care about is this. So we have an El Capitan installer on here, but I don't think this will give me the option to like securely erase or do any kind of partitioning with the hard disk. So I could use like a recovery image and this is an older machine and it doesn't have a recovery partition on it. And I'm not sure if that's, if this is a system that's compatible with network recovery. So what I might have to do is go the MacGyver route, build my own, right? Which should be rather simple because I've done this before. I believe all you have to do, the right clicking isn't enabled, is go into the contents of the installer 
go to the shared support folder, and then take this install ESD, electronic software distribution, uh, just burn it onto a dual layer DVD or image it to a flash drive, and then you can actually boot off the installer like you were using a recovery partition, which again, this system predates that. That was introduced with Lion. This is Snow Leopard. This was a whole generation before that, or version, whatever you want to call it. So I'm thinking I'm going to take that and do a fresh install on a clean hard disk of El Capitan. Adventure awaits. All right, so here you are back at this incredibly dusty array of dust. My gosh, I should really clean this at one point in my life. And here we go. This flash drive should do the trick. Come on. Oh, there we go. Le voila. All right, let's plug her in. Man, seeing that Firewire 800 port on the back, wow. That takes me back a ways. Anywho, let's see. Usually this is the part of the show where a little thingy shows up. Maybe, oh, there, there it is. All right, these are boot camp drivers. Disk utility, here we go. I think I know how to do this. <laughs> we should be able to do this and go to erase, blah, blah, blah. MS-DOS fat, uh, Mac OS extended journaled. I'll just call it untitled, original name. Barber pole action. Any minute now, it's a flash drive, so it's gonna be slow. Plus it's all USB 2. This predates USB 3 on a Mac. So it is GPT, that's what we want because that's the scheme we need to make the flash drive bootable with uh, a Mac system. And then the uh, Mac OS extended journal is going on here and then we should be good to go with uh, hopefully imaging this thing properly. <laughs> I, I hardly have any luck restoring images with disk utility, I, I don't know. Maybe I just suck at what I do, but well, I already knew that. But we're gonna try it anyway. If it doesn't work, I'll use Super Duper because that has never failed me. All right, now I am a little iffy to install a newer system software on an older Mac because for some reason that science has yet to explain, when you throw new Apple software on old Apple hardware, it like magically gets slower. I can't explain that shit. It's crazy. All right, so. We're gonna do it anyway. And honestly, if it sucks, I will throw an older OS on here. So let's go to our shared support. There is our ESD.DMG. And we're gonna go to our lovely restore tab over here, I think. Do you do it from there or do you do it from here? Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. Redundancy. And this is where the party will begin. Source, destination. Seems simple enough, right? <laughs> uh, wrong. Okay, so there is a, an erase destination. Maybe I could have just used that earlier. Yeah, and you know, maybe it is simple. Maybe I just had bad luck before. I am cursed after all. So, our source is the install ESD. Seems accurate. Destination. Erase destination and replace its contents with the blah, 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 blah. Yep. Well, I did already format it, so we should be able to undo that. And hit restore, right? Okay, so place your bets now. We're spinning the roulette wheel here. How much do you want to bet it's not going to work, even though it seems simple? Let's even check the instructions. To restore a disk image. Stored on disk. Click image. Okay, we bypassed that. We just dragged it in the well. To restore a disk image stored on the web, type in the URL. We don't need that. To copy a disk, drag it from the list on the left. Okay, so like it's only one bullet point step. It should be so simple, right? So... Let's do it. Restore. And restore. Ready? Oh, f they didn't give me the administrator password. Oh. <laughs> oh, please say there's a password hint on here. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, I got stumped now. Okay. Um, this is just another reason to erase the hard drive. Okay, I do not have the admin password, and the odds of me tracking down the person and getting their information right now, at this time, very slim. So what are we going to do? We're going to do this on another computer. So, here's my plan. I'm going to take the install ESD DMG. I'm going to copy that. No, not the text. I'm going to copy the image. Throw it on the flash drive. 
All right, I'm gonna copy this over, bring it up to my office, right? Transfer it to the office computer, and then image that onto the flash drive and bring it back down here. Sounds simple, let's give it a shot. This is gonna take a while to copy, so I'll get back to you after um, a scotch or two, or three, or seven, or 12, or 13, or 20, because we're really thirsty. Two hours remaining. That's like almost three hours. Okay, I'm gonna find something faster than a flash drive to transfer this on. So back in the dusty confines of this mess, we can go back to our friend the flash drive because this thing is FireWire 800. This will be way faster. I just wanted to capture this satisfying moment in time where I get to use good old FireWire 800 once again. Satisfaction. The iOmega is in. We have external drive seven here. I have some data on there I don't want to screw with right now. So what I'm thinking is I will actually partition this to have an installer volume on here. So I'm just gonna do it doop. And we'll just call this install. Boom, please work. And bon appetit. We now have the install partition along with external drive seven on the Firewire iOmega flask drive. So with that out of the way, I'm just gonna use this to transfer the disk image. And this should be significantly faster than that flash drive. Four minutes, much better than two hours. All right, that's enough time to do something I probably shouldn't talk about on camera. What will Ken decide to do? Vote now on your PDAs. Now you may be wondering, how is this gonna plug into this? The MacBook Pros don't have FireWire anymore. Well, dongle technology. With the power of these dongles, we will be able to plug it in. Now, I just want to make a point. I know Apple is like infamous for dongles. And they are a little pricey. But just remember, it's not just some dongle. Like, there's actually a controller in here to work with Thunderbolt. Like, you got to have, like, more circuitry in here than you may think. Now, the price may be a little high, sure, but I'll tell you this. I've used third-party dongles before that are cheaper. They all suck, especially ones for displays. I have never had an Apple dongle fail on me. Not a sponsor. Never want to be. Well, maybe if you pay me a lot of money. Anyway, ka-ching. It's plugged in, and now, Thunderbolt. Plug her in. And there we go. And there we have our volumes. Let's take the install image, drag it out, and we'll let that run. And we are done. All right. So I'm going to take that off of here. And now I'm going to restore this to there with our good friend. I mean, Disk Utility could probably do it, but. Super Duper and I are homies, so we're just gonna use that instead because I, I can guarantee you it's gonna work. So, we're gonna copy from disk image. Here we go. Two, install. And, where's the continue button? Enter, maybe? Eh, it's a little screwed up. Password, don't look. Okay, I understand why the button kind of disappeared on me. The interface is a little wonky. Um, <laughs> that's the progress bar right there. I actually can't like see anything that's going on. So I'm just gonna have to trust that it's working. <laughs> oh, oh, it kind of did something there. Oh no, oh no. What does the X mean? I can't, okay. I have no idea what's going on. Oh, this explains everything. <laughs> it's kind of an important update. It even says very important. I can't install it though because the button is missing, so I'm just gonna pretend enter. Okay, so now we're gonna pretend it's installing and doing something properly. It stopped at three seconds. <sighs> Did it work or not? Remember when I said nothing works? Like, I wasn't kidding. If you're not used to Crazy Ken, <laughs> This is, this is pretty typical. All right, so I installed the new version from their incredibly out-of-date website. I mean, it works, 
but oh man brushed metal universal like we haven't been concerned with universal in a long time and not the film studio i'm just talking about you know power pc and intel compatibility <laughs> Well, anyway, old website or not, the product rocks, so let's see if it works. You are about to erase and install. Yes, I'm quite aware. And here we go. Awesome. Now we can see stuff happening. This is good. All right. 3%. 3%. 5%. Yes. You want to watch the whole thing? All right, it looks like it's done. I have done this before, but it's been a while, so hopefully I did it right. Because <laughs> all I see is a packages folder... Some people are probably yelling at the screen, Ken, that's not how you do it. Well, I swear I've done it before, so shut your face. Um, just watch it not work, though. Anyway, hopefully it does. Okay, so I must have whizzed it because it is not showing up in the boot picker. Huh. Okay, so I looked this up on Apple's website. Apparently, yeah, you used to be able to do the trick I was doing with Mountain Lion and Lion, but then that changed with later versions of the Mac OS. So you have to use the terminal. So here's the command I have going for me, and I honestly have no idea if this is going to work. But it's sudo slash volume slash natsuki slash archive slash software images mac os 10 installers install os 10 l copy 10 dot app content resources create install media dash dash volume volumes installer dash dash application path applications install os 10 l copy 10 blah 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 volumes archive software blah 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 boom that is the command okay so we are going to try this. <laughs> Um, so it's going to bring me to a password prompt first. I'm going to type that in. I've never used this command before, but it probably won't work because nothing works for me. And here we go. Command not found. Okay. So typically you need those backslashes to indicate there's a space break. And I did that, but I guess you still need to include a physical space after the backslash. So hopefully now... I didn't miss any of those. Aha! There's a couple more still. Hang on, let me just move the cursor way over here. Here he comes, here he comes, there he is. So let's see, we have... Okay, so I simplified the process by moving the installer into the applications folder. Just that way the path is just slash applications. It's so much easier. So let's paste it in. Boom! That's what I wanted to see, okay. To continue, we need to erase the disk at installer. If you wish to continue, type Y and then press return. Not a problem. Erasing disk. How you feeling over there? You feeling kind of empty? Yeah, I don't understand. All right, so now this part's probably going to take a little bit. So I will be right back. But hey, it's better than what we had before. This is why, this is why it's good to know a little bit of a command line. All right, so the operation is complete. I'm gonna go grab some grub and then we will be right back at this. Highway to the cow zone. Right, that was a delicious sea zone. Now, back to business. So, we have our cable and our flask drive. We're gonna do this through the boot picker. All right, plugging it in and theoretically, a little orange thing should show up with install underneath it or something so oh shit son it worked all right install os 10 l capitan with a firewire logo for nice touch there and let's do it progress bar indicates progress so the little scrolling animation is stuck there <laughs> i don't really know what that says it's probably welcome in some language it's just kind of stuck so so we're gonna go to disk utility Continue. So here is the internal hard disk. We are gonna format this sucker. And we're just gonna call it Macintosh HD, OS 10 Extended Journal, GPT, or GPM, I guess if you don't say table, you say map. I'm the map, I'm the map, I'm the map, I'm the map, I'm the map. All right, here we go. Please work. I, I plead that a lot on this show, don't I? Just please work. And it looks like it did. It said operation successful. All right. We're going to go up to the install OS 10 app and just do a fresh install of LCAP on this late 09 iMac. Wow, this is unbelievable. Stuff is actually working. Continue. Or, there we go. Let's read. 
Yep, I certainly read it. You bet I did. Yes. <laughs> All right, Macintosh HD. Let's install it on there. And here we go. Installer log. I like showing the installer log just for funsies, so you can watch shit go by as it does the thing. <laughs> Show all logs, what do we got here? Yes, exactly, I know. That that right there, that's good. Uh, oh, that right there, that's not very good though. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm just gonna drag that down there. All right, so now we'll let it do its thing about nine minutes remaining, and then it's probably gotta reset and do another thing. So yeah, very technical. You don't wanna watch all this, it's very technical. About a second remaining, about a second remaining. Huh. We are now at about zero seconds remaining. So we have progressed a whole second. Um, the cursor disappeared, so I think it's automatically restarting now. I'm not quite sure. Okay, so we're rebooting now. I'm not sure if it has to do another phase of the installation or if that's it. Hopefully that's it. And we'll see what happens in a, about a minute here or so. And yes, here is the phase two that I was talking about. The ETA is most likely going to be higher because we're running on an external drive, so we kind of fool it a little bit. So I will be back to check in in about a half hour, but through the magic of video, it'll be but a moment. Cool, it looks like we're rebooting now, and I believe we will be loading up the setup assistant in a moment. All right, so we're just blowing through the setup assistant now. We will not use Apple ID or any of that. I don't really have the information the user wants for their account, so I will just make a temporary account with a simple password. I'll even put the password in the password hint if it allows me. <laughs> and um, I'll just let them change it later. And bada bing, El Capitan, ladies and gentlemen, working on this late 2009 iMac. And there's our nice new dock with our new iconography. Beautiful desktop here. So it looks like we are all good to go now. Let's just take a look here. Yep, El Capitan, four gigs of RAM, three gigahertz, Core 2 Duo. Oh, this is a 21 and a half inch iMac, really? Oh, I thought this was a 27. My uh, size perception must be pretty terrible. <laughs> I thought this was a 27. I guess I really couldn't tell. But yeah, 21 and a half inch, all right. So earlier I talked about how the original person selling this was being pretty generous. And I thought it was a 27 inch model, but it's not. So my value that I was judging this computer at is actually now down a bit because I thought it was the bigger model. However, the price they charged was still pretty low. Again, this is not my machine. I'm just here to fix it up. A hundred bucks. A hundred bucks. Like, I don't know if they were just being super generous or what, but tell me if you agree or not. A late 2009 iMac, 21 and a half inch for $100. <laughs> I think that was a steal. So hopefully now it can go on to a new user and they will like it. Freshly upgraded with El Capitan and everything else. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the not too distant future. Catch the crazy and pass it on.